So the pressures that humans have put on the world species often have patterns to them. And in Australia, we hold the dubious title of world head of mammal extinctions. Pretty much a quarter of all the world's mammal losses in the last 200 years have happened on our continent. Uh, and a lot of these species are also really critical ecosystem engineers whose role in the ecosystems have ripple effects on everything else. And one such species is the Eastern Betong, Balbu or Naluda, in Ngunnawal language. Uh, Eastern Betongs are a tiny kangaroo. They're about this big, weigh nearly two kilos, and like a kangaroo, they hop, they have a pouch, but unlike a kangaroo, they don't eat grasses. They actually have very expensive tastes. They eat truffles, which are the fruiting bodies of fungus. And at some times a year, up to 97% of their diet is truffles. There's a few species of betong in Australia, but the one that used to be here is the Eastern betong. They're often now called the Tasmanian betong because they only exist in Tasmania. They went extinct on the mainland about 100 years ago, and that's because of the two major threats to most of Australia's wildlife, habitat loss and introduced species. They get eaten by foxes and cats. Betongs weighing about one and a half kilos are within the range we call the critical weight range mammals, where they're easy to catch and the perfect size snack for a fox or cat. So they're most of what we've lost, the critical weight range. The really teeny tiny and the massive ones come out fairly unscathed. Uh, the other reason that eastern betongs have gone extinct in this region is actually because of direct persecution. Betongs like to dig up things like truffles and tubers to eat. And so when early European settlers started planting potatoes, the betongs went bananas for them, dug up their crops. So betongs were a species with a bounty on them. If you shot and took betong skins to your local magistrate, you could earn a few pennies for it. So they were shot in their tens of thousands and 100 years ago, we lost them from here. So when Mulligan's Flat Sanctuary was established, we wanted to bring back the species that used to be here before colonization and restore that ecosystem structure. And that means bringing back the engineers. So in 2012, we collected about 40 betongs from Tasmania and brought them into Mulligan's Flat Sanctuary. And since then, they've been reproducing and establishing a population here. And we've had to use all the tricks of the trade. So we're using that population viability to make sure that the population will last in here and that also includes the genetics we've got to make sure there's a big enough mix and sometimes we have to trade betongs with Tasmania and other breeding facilities like Mount Rothwell because if a population is too small they can have inbreeding effects that doesn't make them as fit and since we brought the betongs back they've had amazing effects on the sanctuary we found each individual betong digs up eight kilograms of soil a night. And we have about a hundred of them in here, so that's literal tons of soil moving. And you might think, well, does that really matter? Well, soil are the key to everything. You wouldn't have plants without soil, you wouldn't have food without soil, and you wouldn't have all the animals that rely on those plants without soil. And soil is a non-renewable resource. It takes a long time to form, and once you've lost it, it's gone. So in areas like Canberra, we've lost that top fertile range, that O and A horizon, and we're down to the B stuff, the crappy soils. And that's largely because of agricultural practices, too high numbers of sheep compacting the soil and washing it away. So since we brought the betongs back, they've been turning over tons and tons of soil, but the way they do it is what's most important. So Dr. Catherine Ross did her PhD on the betong diggings and she compared them to rabbit diggings and found that they have really different effects. So the betong diggings are like this little triangular snoot hole, which is quite deep, whereas a rabbit digging is like a bowl, a bit of a scrape. So when it rains, betong diggings fill in with leaf litter and they mulch away like a little compost pot, which is great for seeds to germinate in. Whereas when it rains, rabbit diggings wash out and they leave the soil scarred. So exotic species are less likely to germinate in betong diggings. So Dr. Ross found that native forbs were much more likely to germinate in the betong diggings. So the betongs are the gardeners. 
The other critical thing they do is because the betongs are eating the truffles, which are the fruits of fungus, they're spreading the fungus spores. They've evolved together. Australia is the truffle capital of the world and truffles are basically mushrooms but under the ground. So unlike mushrooms, they can't just let their spores float in the wind. They need to be eaten by the betong to spread and germinate elsewhere. And so the betongs eat the truffle and poop the spores out elsewhere. Those fungus then grow on the hair roots of native trees and they have a symbiotic relationship where the truffles and the fungus, they can take in nitrogen from the air, which is a superpower. Not many things can do that. Legumes and acacias can do it and fungus can do it. So they take in the nitrogen and they trade it with the tree. They give the tree the nitrogen and the tree gives them in return sugar. And so they've got that relationship going on. And without the funguses, our trees just wouldn't be healthy. They wouldn't have the nutrients, especially the nitrogen they need to survive. So one little action, bringing the betongs back in here, has improved soil health and function. It's improved the conditions of the growing for all of our native species, especially the forbs. And then that has allowed other parts of the system to recover. So they are an absolute keystone ecosystem engineer. And we're hoping that what we've learnt here we can apply to other parts of the country and someday we can have eastern betongs back in your backyards and everywhere they used to be.